Where did this guy come from? I'm trying to get into the head of someone who makes a game about the Holocaust. That's how they educated us about the Holocaust. They showed us Shinlessis, that was it. What is success for the game? If, if something good comes out of it, what is that good? So the question, like, what, what is a Jew? Like, what, what, what makes you a Jew? I can't get over so many fellow citizens in Europe which we've lost. That's critical. How do we spread that? You're a Jew. You're just a Jew, pretty much. It doesn't matter if you go off into new ideas, don't believe anymore. And I think that's really inclusive. Luke Bernard, game designer, uh, French-born with an English accent, living in yes. LA. <laughs> the Jew saw them all, beat them all, and is now what he always was. All things are mortal but the Jew. All other forces pass, but he remains. What is the secret of his immortality? I'm a video game director. That's what I've been doing for the past 15 years. But video games are basically the most used form of entertainment now. They are. It's where kind of they're bigger than the music industry and movie industry combined. And it's where everyone kind of gets their history from. Honestly, like it's from Call of Duty and all things like that. And to me, when I see games like Call of Duty or that, I kind of wish they would actually address the Holocaust rather than just pretending it didn't happen or being like, we cannot ever touch this because we're a video game. Because I think this actually makes it worse. Like I'd rather, like I explained to people, I'd rather a bunch of people, quote unquote, fuck it up, right? Pretty much just try it out in video game form and just fuck it up. Because eventually, you know, you'll get to a place where someone really knows what they're doing. And for enough that, I talk to students in Tel Aviv, in Latvia too, there's a bunch of students who already are thinking about kind of making video games about the Holocaust. There was even in Israel, there was this, uh, these like 10 years ago, these kind of, these kids that kind of modded Wolfenstein, like the old Wolfenstein, which was, I think that's like over 20 years old. Steph, do I need to translate it for you? Castle Wolfenstein was like the, one of the biggest Nazi, like this was before Tarantino. Before Doom. Before, Doom. Well, before Inglorious Bastards, right? You go into the castle in the mountains and you shoot Nazis, but it's always like 8-bit pixelated, right? It's, like, it's crazy. But it was done by the creators of Doom before Doom, it was, right. very much. So quite a, honestly, in terms of video game industry, it's actually quite a revolutionary title, it was. and But these these uh, kids in, uh, to, in Israel, they pretty much mod modded Wolfenstein, and they had it set in a concentration camp where you played during a concentration camp, taking revenge on the Nazis. Mm -hmm. I saw it. It was in terrible taste. But what happened was, instead of anyone talking to those kids and being like, this is, I understand your intent pretty much. Maybe you can try and make something else. They all shamed the kids they did so you had like a Simon Wiedenfall center went after him you had everyone that just went after his kids and I think what that's was the that's complaint because it was a video game set in a concentration camp where you played as a Jew killing some Nazis it was it was a historical it wasn't good but it you know, was you're capitalizing on the you know having the Jewish people suffered enough you know you put us in this situation again well, it wasn't even because it was done by Jews in Israel. It was. It's pretty much. I think it's because you know, even pushing as this kind of came out, people were like, "Oh, you can't make it into a film. You can't do this. You can't do that." So I think that's what they thought about video games, kind of back then. And I think that's a huge part of the problem. Like how you know, a lot of people still get offended by TikTok, all these digital medias. Like when on TikTok, I remember there's a bunch of kids, pretty much. You know, with the stars and trying to do like uh, concentration camp, um, you know, people using concentration camp. Yes, again, that was not good, done in good taste, but these kids were trying to find a creative way to kind of express themselves, I feel like. And instead of again shaming them, you have to go to them and kind of, you know, talk to them because clearly there's interest in there. But by shaming everything, kind of thing, uh, you know, it's kind of like uh, museums often have a holier than thou thing where they're like, we're the only ones who can educate about the Holocaust. And it's like, right. guys, I love museums. I think they're fantastic. But most of the world can't go to museums. Most of the world has access to the internet. And when you're not on the internet, when someone types in Holocaust, and then questions like, did it really happen? They end up in those of other worse things they will, compared to if, you know, if there's actually a presence for Holocaust awareness kind of on social media, the internet and gaming and all those things. So I think 
that's actually been a huge problem, which has kind of led us, I think, to kind of where we're at now, too. G gaming is uh, perfect for this next generation to learn about life. Um, it's so stupid seeing how the kids still go into these cinder block buildings and, and sit there for eight hours and uh, trying to, the, the, the method of learning is antiquated, the material they're learning is outdated, uh, what the tools they're going to have to go into life are outdated, but the video games, it's like, it, it's almost can evolve in real time. I see my kids play like, you know, FIFA 12, FIFA 13, FIFA 14, like it's constantly updated, everything is updated within it, and you can really educate them and respond to to. to to see how they're interacting with the content and get it back. That's incredible. But I, I got a question for you. It mm -hmm. seems to me, because I've seen people play, I don't I haven't really played these things, but uh I hear there's a huge amount of when the guys have the the things like like yeah. anti-Semitic uh yeah. like when they're going around shooting in those games you're talking about, like crazy anti-Semitic uh, stuff going on there. The video game industry, honestly, is full of uh, hate because a lot of white supremacists have kind of infiltrated the gaming space, like how they've infiltrated, you know, 4chan, kind of meme culture, all those things. And the problem is, again, the big organizations, they're completely ignoring kind of video game space. Like, I know it's Holocaust Survivor on TikTok, which I won't name pretty, pretty much, but they're known Holocaust Survivor. And they tell me on TikTok a lot of the hate which they receive is from gamers, a lot of the anti-Semitism, all those things. And um, I think the big American organizations, they have completely ignored this, they have, and not been in this space and kind of let it kind of grow, grow and grow. Again, you should be talking to actually game companies because, you know, how do we fix this kind of thing? Because I don't think, because the video game community as a whole, I love it. I love uh, the gaming industry. I think video games are great. It actually brings the whole world together. But there's a problem with anti-Semitism and a lot of white supremacy within games that just no one is, there's not one good, there's not one org organization trying to fix it. And even if you talk to organizations, they will not but want to leave, talk but to But let's you. leave the organizations on the side oh, because after yeah, be before you go in the organization, I want yeah, to do like a st hard stop rewind because like I'm like, where did this guy come from? Like, you know, t tell, tell us a little bit. How did you did you grow up like in a Jewish household? Did you face uh, anti-Semitism? I'm I'm trying to get into the head of, of you know, someone who makes a game about the Holocaust before oh, we even so continue. the. Uh... <laughs> you OK with well, that? <laughs> yeah, 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 good. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so, so pretty much. I only found out we were Jewish when I was a teenager, pretty much. So my grandmother and aunt hid everything, pretty much. Uh, my grandmother, she wasn't in the Holocaust. She was in the UK. She was. And pretty much she looked after kinder transport children. And she pretty much did everything to erase everything. She kept on changing her name. She did. My aunt, too, kept on changing her name. And so how we all found out about this, because when my uncle uncles reappeared he did pretty much um uh, uh, one of my grandmother's sons and then just kind of the whole lid kind of blew open it did and so that happened as a teenager honestly i didn't care much i was just like yeah okay and just went about with my life right <laughs> you, you were doing christmas or whatever before that and yeah because also another thing too right my family are hardcore atheist they are pretty much so no religion kind of whatsoever christmas was more of a pretty much we want presents kind of thing it was and and even with my uncle and his wife and his wife uh she's descendant of uh people from france who fled the holocaust right even they can't do christmas so it's very like how can i say super secular it is um slash atheist and so that that's kind of how i found out that thing but when i became really into it was when I went really into um, looking up on my own the Holocaust, pretty much when I was like 18, 19. And I don't know, it just, when you look up acing on your own, you just, when you're, especially when you're, you're that young, you're kind of like, what the hell happened? How could this happen? How is this possible? You know, you just kind of have all these ideas right. kind of happen in your head. And so then I think a sense of guilt kind of came over me too 
what I was thinking pretty much, right? my family completely fine in the UK, apart from my aunt's family, who she doesn't know what happened to her German side because they were in Germany. So I kind of had this guilt thing that kind of happened where I was like, we were completely fine and six million kind of lost their lives. Their families don't exist anymore. Like, I know how to explain it. I just felt really guilty, even if, you know, Technically, you know, it's not my fault or anything, or even my grandmother's fault for being in another country. So that's really, and also another thing. So also I noticed back then when I was like 20, that video games, you had always World War II video games, which again weren't kind of addressing the Holocaust. So it's kind of a combination of those things that made me actually feel the need to want to kind of make a game around it. I feel like there was a, a need to actually all the way back it. then you started to feel that the need to to combine the, these two things yeah because funny enough this game has actually not been in development but it was actually it was a different version it's a different game so back on the nintendo ds like 2009 2008 pretty much i was working on a game similar to what it what i'm working on now but very different because i was younger you know so not as good and Pretty much the New York Times had picked up on it, they had. And I was working on it for Nintendo DS. And instead of asking me, they kind of went directly to Nintendo, or like, are you publishing a game about the Holocaust? And Nintendo was like, no, we're not, because Nintendo doesn't publish the games. You become a developer, then you kind of self-publish on their platforms. So everything kind of exploded then, like over 15 years ago. Well, first you had the New York Times, and you had those other things pretty much. It was all like, oh, video game about the Holocaust, what the hell is going on kind of thing. So everything just all exploded. Um, there was half pushback on it and half not there was. So some people, some um, outlets in the UK, they were going to Holocaust survivors and being like, what do you think about a video game about the Holocaust? And of course, when you say that, the Holocaust survivor right away is like, what the hell? So I had like Holocaust survivors. Like it was a big shit show. It was, yeah. but it didn't really stop me from wanting to work on it. It was my pretty much life happened where I had to work on other games, you know, because I had to make a living and all those things. And I was always like, I was always pretty much like, I refuse for this game to be for profit. It always has to be free so i kind of waited until up until like two years ago until in my career and as a director i was kind of really ready to do it because now i'm like 36 so when i was like 34 and that's when I, when i kind of brought back the project pretty much where actually proper research this time like it basically took us a whole year just on the research alone it did like talking to multiple survivors going through all the Shur Foundation's files, pretty much going through basically files just kind of everywhere because the Holocaust in France is very different. It is right. compared to the rest of Europe. Right. So that's kind of how it got up to kind of this, the point now. And the point now is uh, well, now no one's kind of offended or shocked by it anymore. And now I just get support, which is kind of like a bit of a site that, oh, I wish we had a bit more controversy because you know you get get marketing out of it as controversy but now everyone's kind of accepted it they have like even did a talk in january with the holocaust center up in canada and we also had the german embassy and also someone from the u.s holocaust museum so now it's just become within kind of even like academic circles and museums where it's more like there's a curiosity towards it rather than 15 years ago where it's like you've lost your mind you can never do this what, what is look what is success for the game like what 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 if if everything goes the way that you envisioned it even back when you were 18 you know through you then you developed and you thought about it and you had time to research like what if if something good comes out of it what is that good so what i what i hope the game will do so I know in terms of users, it will be successful based on kind of my past games, which total has been over 20 million people which played my past games, which are free to play, not the paid ones. If not, I'll be super rich. <laughs> um, <laughs> but su success, my intent is kind of to get people curious about it, to want to learn more, and also to kind of bring awareness to it, the Holocaust, and also a very lofty goal which I hope someone who's a kind of an anti-Semite plays it 
and Cam feels a bit of empathy, starts liking the characters and maybe starts being like, yeah, maybe I shouldn't be such a racist kind of thing. That I mean, it was just a very what will make goal. them what, just identifying with the suffering of another person or is there something specifically about this? that? Well, so with the game, right, you don't, because if we just showed all the horrific things, right, you kind of just, as an audience, you become desensitized to it. You do right. kind of nonstop. Yes. So you'll actually get to live through, it's about a Polish Jewish family in France. You'll get to play through kind of different different characters, pretty much of the family, kind of like the everyday life. Like some things are all the beginning, it's just kind of opening the shop. Just if, when, you're, when you're playing as the son, it's just going playing with the other kids. So you, kind of, you get attached to the characters. So you kind of get attached to them and kind of bit by bit, you kind of, you know, things get gradually worse, they do. So eventually when, let's say, the bad things not spoil too much kind of happen, hopefully the, the person will feel more empathetic and kind of maybe start, you know, because a lot of anti-Semites haven't met any Jews, they haven't, right? right. So they just imagine... You know, these people, you know, you know, the anti Semitism thing, people full of money, controlling everything kind of thing. When uh, if you look at me, just the Holocaust alone, when you look at all the photos, these were all like working class and kind of like not ra- not wealthy people that all sent off to their deaths. Like in France, it was um, you know, they first deported the Polish Jewish men. Um they were not wealthy men, they're just men who came to France to have a better life. They just immigrants, they were. So it's really just I think it's like film, pretty much. Like, I remember in my classroom when I was a teenager, when we all watched Schindler's List, because we that's that's how they educated us about the Holocaust. They showed us Schindler's List, that was it. But pretty <laughs> much everyone was kind of shocked at the end of the film. They were. And I'd say it was in my classroom. I never heard anyone say anything anti-Semitic. I think that film really actually kind of touched them, it did. And that's why I think entertainment has the ability to do because people come still, still yeah. Because if, if you look at it, not so stories, right? Stories are what connects kind of everyone in the world, no matter if it's religion, you know, or like books, like you know, films, anything. I think stories are really what connects people and can make people think good or bad things about others. Of course, multiple other things can happen, of course, but that's kind of what I believe the path stories can do i think shinna's list actually when i talked to holocaust survivors they told me shinna's list why it was so great for them because they could finally talk about it it was no longer taboo because of that film so the ones which i know from europe very much told me that did, did, did you yourself experience any direct um anti-semitism um, like did, were you on the receiving end at any so, point I would say when I started being more vocal about kind of being Jewish, like like th- there were some things like when my mother, right? My mother has like kind of tanner skin, she does. And she also just to send her stereotypes, right? Uh, you know, has a prominent Middle Eastern looking kind of nose, you know. And so she would get often comments, she would like things like that. So I mean, we it's been more recent where I've experienced more anti-Semitism, I'd say, from social media, from even like when I'm kind of out in LA, because I decided to kind of also wear like a Star David, because I I started really identifying with the, my Jewish ethnicity. I have because I kind of view Jews uh, me personally as an ethnic group, you know. I do that's like I think uh, to me, anti-Semitism is racism, it is. And uh, so it's really been more recent. And that's why I've come a bit more out there as being like, hey, I'm Jewish kind of thing. So even, and it started even more last year, I'd say too, which is kind of interesting. Kind How do your of, friends feel about it that you are kind of coming out as a Jew? So, okay, so this is very fascinating. So when I first arrived in America, right? Um, so when I'd like walk around like in New York, so I lived in New York for a while. And often you'd have like, a, I don't know exactly what it was, but often you had like Orthodox, I think different, I don't know exactly what it is, but you know when they had the, these vans and kind of like a party going on and kind of like alcohol. And I'd, I'd walk around and be It's called the Mitzvah like, Tank. The Mitzvah Tank. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that's it. And pretty much I walk around New York and, and without anything, about like, are you Jewish? I'd be like, yeah. 
and they just invite me into the into the thing which you think would have fun to so, put out the fill in right <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so i started kind of um in in new york it was kind of like people would ask me just a lot more about yeah cool and um even kind of in la like so but around my friends so when I used to live in New York, I hung out with a lot of, uh, most of my friends were uh, Sephardic French Jews. They were pretty much, who were kind of like me, who didn't like France that much. So again, we're all super secular. We were, so pretty much we do every single holiday possible because any reason to drink and get stuff. <laughs> Kwanzaa! <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'd take anything we would. But all the French holidays, all the American holidays, take everything. Um, Hanukkah, yeah, Christmas, uh, yeah, everything. But um, Pretty much with so with them was our community. We didn't really care that much. Didn't really get that much kind of anti-Semitism kind of coming out from other people. It's really been more recently, the past two years, that it's really started to kind of boil. It has before. Oh, but yeah, but my friends, how did they? Because I was going into another right. subject there. Honestly, it's been not great. With some of them it hasn't so say for example because of israel like, because they they think like oh that means you're you're racist against palestinians or something oh or something no no else. no 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 because uh most of my friends actually don't even give a shit about uh foreign policy or or foreign right. governments it's more they got annoyed because i was just posting a lot being like this is happening anti-semitism this is going on this is bad kind of thing and they just got really sick. And one of them even stopped talking to me and told my other friends, he's like, Luke talks too much about you stuff, basically. Is it because, is it because it felt like you suddenly maybe found an identity of sorts? And they were trying to just kind of lose the identity because that's the general trend today, right? It's like, just, we're all the same. We're not all the same. Come on, guys. No, no, we're all the same. And suddenly this I guy comes and feels a sense of identity. Isn't that infuriating sometimes to people? It, it 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 was sometimes some people so some people are like you never used to say you're jewish and i'm like yeah everyone knew i was working on a game about the holocaust you just didn't listen before i've just become very very outspoken about anti-semitism because it's also taken over a large part of my career now because of the video game and, and what i do and if i was kind of oblivious to everything right you know i shouldn't be making the game if if i was just like completely oblivious to everything going on in the world so it's gone like I was some people and some other people, it's been completely fine, actually, it has. I've actually noticed more um, more support or more cooler things among my friends who are, let's say, non-white, pretty much. So I have a lot of friends who are Persian, they are, and that Persian people are among my favorite people, they are kind of on earth, and also Latinos, Black. So that's all been very great. Like I remember when, even when Kanye West kind of came out, you, like, you basically had all my black friends, gay friends, like Persians, all that. They were very outspoken about it. They were, but kind of the American, let's say American white, white kind of, you know, don't know how to explain it. They weren't as much. And I think why I identify more with Persians and Latinos or other groups in America is because we're more immigrants. We are, we're kind of all immigrants, uh, even the ones who are, had to leave because of asylum because because Iran sucks, you know. Right. I I think that's why we have maybe a kind of closer bond. And some people like Persian people, they can kind of understand, you know, like um, I know they just seem to understand a lot more than some other groups. Yeah. And I I don't know quite what that is because I do think it's quite fascinating because Iran, the government, it's the most anti-Semitic government on earth. Yeah, but that's a government. That's a very yeah. small yeah. part of the population. As a but culture, this is a fascinating culture, you know, very, very yeah. wide. Yeah, but but the people aren't. And it well, of course there are, but in America, it's just I've never quite and I, I know a lot of people, I've never had an issue. It's just a very interesting thing. Like even in my industry, right? The people which attack me and things like that have often just been white, white, how can I say, white savior, social justice kind of t types, uh, you know, who are basically like, Luke Bernard is the biggest Zionist in the industry. He hates Palestinians. And I'm like, mate, <laughs> I, I have some friends who are one state solution of Palestinians. I don't agree with them, but I'm friends with them. Like, so it's been, uh, yeah, it's been a very interesting thing.
Uh, yeah, everything everything became uh, very black and white in recent years. Uh, it's like you're either you're this or that. There's no yeah, room yeah. for no room for for gray area for contemplation for changing opinion. It's very interesting, but I, I'm curious. I mean, you brought up a lot of interesting things, and uh, we all, we often ask someone. You know, we often ask people who come here. If you have to explain to an now that you're experienced your Jewishness to some extent, you're making a game on the Holocaust, you had to kind of see yourself. Um, the you anti-Semitism kind of comes with it. It does pretty much. You, right. You, so, <laughs> so the question is, if 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 the, if aliens came and you have to explain to them what are Jews and why they get the special attention, what would you tell them? It's actually a very good question. That is actually, I would say, part of me doesn't understand the obsession with jews i don't but at the same time i think don't know if it's you know it's just my theory right i think jesus has been one of the worst things for the jews in a way because i think when the church church basically in europe did everything to kind of remove jesus's jewishness right to kind of really portray him as really like nordic you know blonde hair small nose all those things like and instead of portraying him more like an israeli guy I think that kind of did a lot of damage because uh, basically, let's put it this way, right? You're in Europe, you worship a Jew. And yet in European history, they hated Jews. It's like if Jesus, say, imagine if Jesus came back alive, right? He'd probably be like, what the fuck, guys? Those were my people. What the fuck did you guys do? <laughs> I honestly think that I do. Like, I. So, so, okay. So, so that, so, so that may be, may explain the fascination with the Jews because of their relation to uh, Christianity. It, you know that's that's not a, you know it's a it's a good answer we'll take it uh but how, what would you you know say to the aliens of you know who jews are like what are jews because you mentioned you know just before in passing for you jews jewish is an ethnicity uh although you know if you really look into it it's not one ethnic group it's a hodgepodge oh, right that's it's not I mean. one there's, there's, there's multiple jewish ethnicities yeah it's not it's, 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 multiple it's, races multiple ethnic groups multiple hmm. religious even thoughts ideas uh, multiples uh, multiple ideologies multiple nationalities it's very diverse it is very diverse. Very much it's almost like, too diverse so, that, so the that, question so the question like, what, what hmm. is a jew like what, what what makes you a jew that's really the question me myself well, let's start with or, you. You know, we can expand, we can grow the circle. Uh. Well, so I, it, it really came out more, it's more the ethnicity. It is like kind of, kind of really what why it came out is because my grandmother hid it. She did. And I think by her hiding it and having to do everything to hide her children too, you know, from it, I think it's in a way to me, it's like, because my grandmother's dead now, she is. So it's kind of like, in a way, remembering her and kind of doing right by her. Because I feel like because of the world, because what she saw happen, right, even if it was in mainland Europe, I think it really, you know, it raised who she was. It did. And I feel like I kind of lost a lot of things like culture, like so many different things because of that. So I think it's, for me, myself, it's kind of like just paying homage to my grandmother it is and also like I said I feel a big sense of responsibility for us remembering kind of six million that died so my thing I think for me it's just it really comes from the holocaust it does because I still me personally I cannot get over that like I just can't I can't get over so many fellow citizens in Europe which we've lost which are just gone that you know neighbors like even if it was over 70 years ago, it's just something that I just can't seem to get over kind of mentally. So I think it's just that more so it's not, I wouldn't even say it's more a personal thing. It's, well, maybe it's a bit personal because my grandmother, but I think it really st does stem to my grandmother, it does. Luke, do you much. think that uh, something like that could happen again in our lifetime? So it wouldn't because of Israel, because Israel exists very much but would it happen in a, if Israel didn't exist yes I, I I do think that could happen again in another genocide could genocides still happen they so do what, what can we do so on the one hand we have so first of all it's shocking right that it could happen again and I we we agree with you about that that it, it could uh, and the fact that we all agree and yeah. the fact that it happened 
so many times in our history like it happened yeah. with the romans it happened with the greeks it happened with the persians it happened with the spanish it happened with the german i mean it's like and then we the all French, agree everyone yeah and then we all agree that it could happen again so on the one hand it's really important to understand our history have to because we didn't just end up here you know it's we didn't start at zero no there's a lot yeah. that led us to here but what you know we also don't want to just keep repeating this same story mm -hmm. over and over again so part of it we have to learn the history but then after we learn what happened we have to somehow you know we we suck as a people we're terrible at learning from our i mean we read the same story i mean you grew up secular but i mean like every passover we read what happened to us in egypt you know like every many times throughout the year we read they tried to kill us we yeah. didn't die let's eat you know they tried to kill us again we didn't die. but 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 we're not taking the lessons and doing something from it like how do you inject that into it? Like, how do we inject? What does it mean that the three of us are sitting here saying, yeah, you know, actually, they would genocide us again if they could? It's and, crazy. and just to add to Seth's question, and, it, and those things always happen in the most developed countries. It doesn't happen in some weird back country, people are savages, blah, blah. No, the most educated, most uh, developed technologically, intellectually, culturally that's where th that shit happens so so, I, so you know what i could ha i could have a theory again doesn't mean it's correct all those no no, no we, we want to hear it we want to as it usual in. so if i look um pretty much what was going on in in europe and from a lot of uh even people who died in the holocaust who even ended up in america ended up deported right is uh so as as can Nazi jews really had they were quite advanced for their time in terms of thinking they were. So, you know, it's funny, like, say, for example, all the things about, um, you know, how everyone's talking about trans people now, right? It was an asking Nazi Jew during Nazi Germany that came up with the term trans, I believe trans existed, right? The person who found the first lesbian bar in New York, asking Nazi Polish Jew, she got deported because he thought her ideas were obscene, but kind of very forward thinking uh, often. So I think, Jews in general, very much, have kind of these crazy ideas, often which are quite, you know, um, and, and often to do with human rights. By the way, yeah, human, human rights, rights, social justice, humanity, so, right? Very mm -hmm. humanistic. Okay, I'm just adding. Go on. Yeah, and so I think a lot of people when they 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 see that they see kind of Jews as perverting their culture, perverting this, and instead of when it's like, no, it's just be better in terms of human rights. And that's what I think is more maybe the modern times, because again, I, I don't know, I can just focus purely on the Holocaust in France. I do, you know, just arts, things like that, like, you know, because a lot of Jewish arts, like pretty much one of the big first lesbian plays was a Yiddish play. It was. So I think it's a lot of people who are just viewing Jews as kind of, because Jews also compared to as ethnic groups you know no matter where you put the jews they will remain jews they will like it's very hard to like be like no no you adapt to our thing you convert nope not gonna happen mate so they're all so you can't really control them so i think that's what gets a lot of governments or people kind of annoyed at them that they can't control them and that they always bring these new ideas of kind of human rights at the same time so that doesn't mean necessarily because we there's also the far left there's also communism there's so many things which also attack jews too but then their version is jews are capitalists this is that because there's been a couple successful jewish Can't business people here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean that's the thing they're communist they're capitalist they're kind of everything but i think it, it comes really from the wanting to survive probably from the history kind of thing so i think that that's why and i don't think it's just common to the jews i don't pretty much and one of the other people who i know a lot of who i, I think are quite similar are kind of also armenians too who are also another middle east ethnic group. I, I, I heard that uh, comparison before yeah and uh, of course, I mean, genocide, I mean, happened pretty much. Then Turkey denying it for 100 years. 
And but Armenians, anytime they kind of go to any kind of country in the diaspora, pretty much they keep the Armenianness, the Armenian they are. Right. But at the same time, if you look at LA, right? The Armenians really built up kind of their neighborhoods they did. They're all entrepreneur types they are. And I think it's kind of similar to how Jews are pretty much. So I think when a people kind of faces, uh, you know, a lot of people you know, getting genocided all the time, they kind of, you know, become stronger culturally and also want to uplift each other more. So they do so. I just give you an example, like in America, right? Um, just... I'm part of this organization, which is this entertainment organization. And no, we don't control the movie industry. We don't. Um, and pretty much that organization is about helping everyone. So even like I brought my roommate, who's also French, I brought him to like uh, events and all those things. And the first thing people are there, like, let's help him out, even if he's not Jewish. So I think there's all those things that probably contribute to how can I say like anti-Semitism too? Because Jews in general, not everyone, of course, help out other people like their friends, everyone. It's just very helpful how I feel, how it's been in America. Pretty much. That's think, think, let me let me let me mm -hmm. that's critical. How do we spread that? That Jews are helpful. Yeah, be yeah. yeah because and it seems to me like the left and the right in politics now hate each other and you have real, you have jews on both sides um it it seems to me like it's it's a kind of a con it's kind of a, a paradox because on the one hand jews are really helpful towards each other on the other hand jews are so also so opposite and have so much kind of disdain for each other stubborn yeah. and confrontational <laughs> yeah i mean i mean the whole thing about jewish arguments is true it is you, you go to a Shabbat dinner, that's why I love going to them. You debate politics and it's great. Right. <laughs> it is. But also the French do that too. It's 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 um but Jews get more this this the, the kind of stereotype of it. But, but even if you look go ahead. May, 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 no, may, maybe um another again, just to add to that question to make it even more poignant, uh can the Jews are or are the or are the Jews are Jewish people? Mm -hmm. Prominent Jews, regular Jews, every, all the Jews. Are we in a position to 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 help the world, to do better in the world? That's what I want to ask. Because everybody say control this, control that. I don't know, control not control. I know there's a Jew at the head of Facebook. There's a Jew at the head I... of uh, the movie studio. There's a Jew at the head of this gaming studio. There's a Jew at the head of this financial mm -hmm. institution. There's a Jew in a startup here and here. You know, I'm asking, can we as Jews actually? do what we've been doing with all the European countries over the decades, right? You bring Jews to Poland, boom, Poland, you know, blossoms. You bring Jews to France, France blossoms. You bring Jews to mm -hmm. England. It's, it's always, they always introduce, as you even, said, new Even the, the prime minister of France before the Holocaust was Jewish. Right, right, no, no. I mean, it, it's, there's no question that you bring Jews somewhere, they're like good fertilizer. Stuff starts to grow. So, so now, can we do it on a global level? Can we do it on a global level? level use all our resources connect all the nodes in the system in the network become one great you know human glue and and, 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 and do it can we do and it I, and, I, and i think that's why we get all these conspiracies because i think a lot of us do even try to do it like i'll give you an example i i i have friends pretty much i have friends who actually uh, have received lots of funding from George Soros's foundation they have because they basically are trying to bring democracy to the rest of the Middle East there. And to just example alone, no matter if people like George, George Soros or not, agree with him or disagree, he's one of the people, for example, that's bloody rich and just throwing kind of all his money kind of <coughs> into it, no matter if, if people agree or not, kind of thing. So Jews are trying and act pretty much and i think that's why all the conspiracies kind of come because but, but they are we aren't... trying but are we trying together i'm, I'm no. not saying uh, we're not no. i feel like we're following <laughs> every jew follows his egoistic vision i have a vision i will do it right i will you know change the internet i will change politics i will change the movie industry i will change whatever it was always been this i'm looking for this can we do something and and this is the place where we're where our our really we're where our uh, perspective on history, on network science, hell, even on biology, uh, you know, comes into play because you see that nature works in this way. It doesn't work in terms of uh, it doesn't 
you know, the, the ego only works as much as it can serve the kind of the collective quality. Wherever you look, look at the human body, right? Yeah. This is a unified system where all the parts, you know, work for one another, with one another, even though you have crazy opposites, you have crazy acid, and you have soft tissues and muscle and bone, all that stuff, they all work together. If they don't, we call it cancer. Yeah. So I'm, I'm asking, can, can the Jews be that part in the human body, those enzymes, those hormones, those, you know, neurotransmitters, whatever you want to call it, that small in number, but can bring about tremendous changes if they work uh, together under I mean, one vision. You know, I don't know because Israel has look at Israel. It's had how many elections and how many we, we years? had. We had, we had five. I just voted last <laughs> week, and we had forty parties. So pretty soon we're going to have a party for every worker. That's the <laughs> yes. But, I mean, but, <laughs> but I, so, I, I and I agree. By the way, I mean we haven't even talked about Israel yet. But but I'm just asking. <laughs> I just wanted to put this vision out there because Seth and I were really concerned about us. He's in America. I'm in Israel. It's not getting better for Jews in America. It's not getting better for Jews in Israel. Forget about the rest of the world. This is already like, you know, yeah, I, I would say persona non grata everywhere else. It's like, you know, so me, me as a person, right? Like, again, also working kind of Holocaust stuff. Like, I kind of have talked to everyone. So I've talked to conservatives, I've have, I've talked to liberals, and I kind of decide to just talk to everyone because I think. I think you can kind of convince people from your point of view if you more become a friend with them or talk to them rather than being kind of enemies, right. you know. So, and I, but I think it's kind of what's going on, kind of in the world, kind of with ev everything right now. I think the entire world is kind of divided. So I don't see this kind of happening anytime soon, where everyone would kind of. And, and but I do think that is kind of an uh, important thing because I work with someone at a Holocaust museum, right? And he always told, tells me the big problem with the left now, because he, he's really a lefty like me, is that we're, we're all infighting instead of just, you know, being like, okay, we stand for this, let's, at least, let's agree on things we stand with pretty much, rather than just fighting over the, all the small details. And I think that's really what's kind of going on in the world kind of with everyone now so that i mean even in so, israel so here's the vision like. here's the vision you can't get eight billion people to unite that's crazy but maybe yeah. eight million can do it or even yeah, a smaller that, that's group. easier yeah it's easier right and and those eight million or 15 million whatever they're spread out all over the world already there's there are already bits and pieces of them everywhere so you can have the seed everywhere. You can get them to agree on something. And that something could be a very simple vision. Unity is the most important. You can have whatever opinion you want. You can believe whatever you want. Just as long as you sanctify unity. As long as you never walk away. Kind of like a marriage, a good marriage, right? Where you can mm -hmm. have arguments and then you have makeup sex, right? You, you, you got to yeah. keep it together. If you keep blowing up the, the, the union, you get nothing, right? Like you, can, you can have kids. You can build a business. You can have a family. But if we can agree on that... Because when Seth and I, we have an episode on the on the Holocaust in our in our podcast, and I and I know you're a busy man, and I hope you'll be able to hear some of that. I'll, you know, I'll shoot over some links for some episodes that are really you know important to us. But the level of disunity, animosity, mutual hate among Jews was you know the, skyrocketing. The Jews in America didn't want oh, to say, allow just, Jews just, from Europe to during the Holocaust. It was yeah, and, and yeah. as you say. It was skyrocketing. Jews well, just plain hated each other. Groups of Jews hate each other as the Holocaust was rolling in. You know, well, even the, then. The, that's one thing which people don't want to admit what happened in France is uh, the French Jews thought that by deporting the Polish men first, that they would be kind of saved. They did like that, that. The France thing is incredibly messy and just not good at all pretty much because it's very different very different than nazi germany pretty much um so yeah that's that's one thing because they even the french jews were kind of racist towards the polish jews they were they mm -hmm. viewed them as inferior this and that and, and we can even everywhere look uh, th th that's what seth and i found out every time in history there was a jewish genocide or expulsion or pogrom it was always preceded by crazy. The Hanukkah, uh, the Hanukkah story started with Jews fighting other Jews. It was a civil war.
Mm -hmm. Before the Romans destroyed the temple, it was a civil war between Jews. And it's just like you, like, like you probably exactly like us, you know, we grew up, it's like Nazis bad, you know, Jews, poor people, Nazis came and got us. And yeah. then you start, and I can just tell from how you're explaining it, when you start to see what happened from studying history, what happened in France, way more messier and way more nuanced than originally thought. And it turns out that what you experience in France about the French Jews, you know, getting trying to get rid of the Polish Jews, it's the same shit every single time when you go back in our history. It's these Jews turning on those Jews, and then the enemy can get us. And these Jews turning on these Jews, and then the enemy can get us. Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's a bit like how what I've noticed, like how uh, was in the U.S. It's kind of like. Uh, some Jews which are like oh I hate the Zarnish Jews and these right. kind of Jews and they're constantly kind of in in fighting they are and it's kind of like they don't even know what Zionism is and to me when people ask me if I'm a Zionist it's not, I'm just like I kind of don't give a shit Israel exists why are you even having this question it's a country exists right it's not going anywhere it's a bit like if some I don't know, it's a bit like if someone asked me let's talk about the France question it'd be like what France exists. What? What? Why would what? Why would France go? So that's why it's what's happening in America, where they don't even know what Zionism is. Someone they're like, I'm anti-Zionist. Some of them. It's like, well, so you want state of Israel to be destroyed, and where do all the inhabitants go? You fucking psycho! Because you know, because it because it, it is that that because again, I'm I don't give a shit. Honestly, I just don't give a shit about. So, because it happened, it happened, it exists, right? No point in, in discussing it to me. But discussing the destruction of a country, it's just utter bonkers to me. I, I just don't get that. I don't. So, so pretty much, so, go ahead. So, <laughs> the, we're, we're trying to be a little extreme and say, radical. we have a small, radical, really, radical. radical, sorry. We have a really small group of people and we already know what will happen to us anyway if we don't so let's try and unite i mean <laughs> you know i mean we're just seeing the we're just seeing the patterns you know and mm -hmm. the hate is not going away it's always there it's always preceded by the same patterns you Let's all, make it good for everyone. Let's right, put all, all our Jews, forces together, the best yeah. video games, the best, everything we can do for the sake of everyone. Yeah, Let's we, we, put our powers together and make, you want to be trans, you want to do this, you want to do everything, but for the good of everyone. That's a, that's, a, that's actually kind of, kind of what I've noticed pretty much. Uh, it's a good point you brought up that. So pretty much I noticed in America because a lot of people when certain groups or people right decide to hate one group of people it's not long until they start coming for the Jews pretty much is, is what I've, I've noticed and that's why I think we have to to guys point be kind of more united which Jews have been like Martin Luther King all those things they, they've been more uh united they have so but that is actually very very important it's, it's kind of like when i see people when they talk about human rights and all those things they only focus on one kind of human rights so it's a bit like how i thought it was awesome that people in tel aviv were basically uh protesting for what's going on in iran, iran i thought it's great that tel nice. aviv had the biggest vegan march pretty much so it's it's so all those things of kind of unity i think is actually very important i actually think when Jewish organizations maybe focus too much only on Jews. You're not bringing in as a people to to kind of you know support you, and maybe just being a bit too, I know, isolationist pretty much because because I that's maybe what I think. Maybe we should because I'm not I'm not really an organizer or like anything who knows kind of the future of how we should organize everything. I view myself as someone because the game right. I tell people it's not for Jewish people. It's kind of for everyone else it is, pretty much. So my way of thinking is, or hoping, is how do I make the world kind of be less anti-Semitic and kind of 
know more about Jews and like Jews more, rather than so, trying to find a solution of how we fix this. So, okay, so here's here, maybe you can add a little spice to you know the the version two point version of the game. You know, the next update when it comes out. After mm -hmm. it comes out, after it launches successfully in 2023, Success. everybody gets on board and loves it. Uh, just maybe, like, maybe think of another level, right? Where this whole reality is like a game, and we're playing it. And and you know, if you were like, if you're Jewish, or if you have thoughts about uniting the world, because by the way, Jew from the word Yehudi from the word Yehud, unity. Mm -hmm. it, nobody know, really knows that, but it's uh, it's embedded in the name. It's an ideological group. That's what we say. It's not ethnic, this, that. It's an ideological. It's a united around an ideology of mm -hmm. unity. Love your friend as yourself. That's the biggest rule of the Torah. That's like It's all written in our texts. But we kind of like turn our back to it. No, we're like everyone else. No, but we're not like everyone else. And everyone else is not, never going to let us forget about it. So maybe we can look at life as this game where you kind of keep going through the levels. And every every time you kind of go in the wrong direction, you just get killed off. Oh, pogrom, expulsion. Yeah. And you're like, until you have to figure out that, oh, the solution lies when we when I somehow connect with this player and this player and this player. And we, we somehow band together, not against each other, not using our contacts to get ahead. No using our contacts to get more connected and show a, a greater model of connection, connectivity, you know, dimensionality to the rest of the world. Maybe I that see. is, you know, is a good game that we can play. I see more the than... Brit you know what's funny? I think the British Jewish community are actually the best ones in terms of unity and actually kind of gain stuff done. Because if you look anytime on social media, there's things such as Jewish British Twitter, they don't really do much infighting, they don't. When they notice something's messed up, they all come together as they do. Even if you look at it, the fact that pretty much in the UK, I thought it was a good thing that the UK really was like, we don't want Jeremy Corbyn, because it wasn't the 300,000 Jews that, you know, it wasn't. But the fact that the UK was like, yeah, the guy's in anti might, yeah, let's, let's, let's not vote for him. So, but in the Jewish also community too, in the UK, so... They're big leaders, like someone like, he's not even a leader, but, you know, he's just a comedian, David Bedell. He say, for example, on Twitter, the way he interacts with everyone, he kind of interacts with everyone he does. He really pays close attention kind of to the Jewish community. I've even chatted with him a bit. He's really good and British Jewish community is really good. While in America, that's where it feels like, where it's more kind of all over the place. It does. British Twitter, British Jewish Twitter is one of the best things where they always manage to take down the anti-Semitic stuff, always manage to come together. And I think in America, I nearly wonder if it's an American kind of way of thought, maybe, maybe, you know, because in Europe, I think we have more the memory of the Holocaust, pretty much too, we're right on that continent. And in America, Jews have prospered, they have, compared to other places. So I feel like they maybe don't feel as much threat, you know, not as concerned about things pretty much. And maybe that's why it's a bit different where everyone's kind of more infighting down in America compared to in the UK. Maybe. No, 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 no. There's no need to preface that with maybe. I think yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Cool, cool. Um, I want to, I think the last thing we want to, talk i mean i feel like we could talk more but you know there's you know there's also a limit to your time and i and you know the, our listeners attention but um the, the last thing is uh in your game um i noticed and I, you know, obviously i haven't played it uh but mm -hmm. uh in your game there's um i think an emphasis on uh I don't know if you said it in this article I read or someone said it on this kind of powerlessness of the characters. It's not so much choice. It's more like you're kind of watching the horror unfold kind of like how it happened yeah. back then, right? The question is, so I, I want to ask a, kind of the deep existential question. Do we really have choice? You know, do people have choice? Uh, and, and if so, what what is the choice today uh, for, for people? Okay, oh, maybe. I, I I you know? could tell you more the choice of the game and also back then I could more because why why I made it kind of that way is because well really was luck. It was kind of just this and that. And if if I had choice where you could survive and all those things, it would kind of make some players think, oh, they had a choice. Oh, it was their fault that all this happened. But like the example like Germany, right? 
one percent of the population were Jewish. How could how could they take on like 99% of Germany? It was impossible. But also another thing, right? In France, the French Jews very much fought like hell. They did so the French resistance, all those things were made up of a lot of Jews and Armenians too, funny enough, because Armenians saw what happened, they did. So they knew what was going to happen to the Jews, they did too. And so in France, with the French resistance, that's what's funny, right? In France, the French resistance, it's not so much the French, you know, France like to push its narrative. Yeah, we hated the Germans. No, it was more the immigrants in France who basically noticed something fucking going on, immigrants and Jews that noticed something going on and who were fighting back. So there is actually a lot of um, people fought like hell in the Holocaust. But like an example, like in one uh, in the ghetto, right? Some people thought about doing an uprising, but they were like, if we do the uprising, they might just kill all our families. So we can't risk this very much. Right. And so... Yeah, like it happened in Warsaw. Yeah, totally. yeah. So so it's really... But nowadays, I mean, nowadays, if, if really something was really bad, I, I'd tell people, yeah, move to Israel, pretty much. That is the only... If it was really bad, if, say, a genocide was kind of happening again in uh, one would country... You, would you move to Israel? Would you come here? Would, Oh, I quite like it in America. I I have to visit Israel. I keep on like my assistant's been to Israel. She's not even Jewish. She's Native American. Everyone I know has been to Israel <laughs> pretty much. And they're like, it's awesome. I, I have a thing where maybe if I go there, I might think it's awesome and might not want to leave. <laughs> you can you can stay. There's a good there's a good tech uh, sector here. You you'll have a good time. Yeah, but uh, I'm, I'm I'm very opinionated politically, so now I'm pretty sure I joined the left in Israel and all that, and I just never leave. We'll <laughs> see. We'll, we'll have we'll have a we'll have another talk about that. You know, <laughs> it's a long. But uh, do you think it will solve anything if all the Jews move to Israel? No, I I don't think that's good either because it one of the worst things which I think with Europe right is we lost. Just in terms of Europe, right? We lost so much culture. We lost we lost so much. Like it's it's a cultural genocide that happened too. Like it's I mean, the fact that there's you know barely any Jews kind of left in Europe is honestly horrific. I I I think and, and me personally, the biggest fuck you to the Nazis or what happened would be actually having a really vibrant Jewish community. And no anti-Semitism in Europe, which is sadly not the case. But yeah, I, I really, you know, because I, I just think it's kind of, you know, sad just everyone just all oh, just hang just being one country, you know. <laughs> I I you know it's 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 like it's like it's like, it's like anyone um pretty much. So, so that's why, like in France, in France, a, a lot of Jews who are super French, I mean, they because of anti-Semitism, they have to move to Israel because they France is no longer for them, and it's sad because they're really French. They are and contribute so much to French culture and society. And you know, this this way, if we had no 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 Jews left in France anymore, France would be boring. It would because most of our comedians are, are Jewish. They are actors, all those things, the arts. They're Sephardic, right. and you know, they kind of brought their Sephardic culture with them. So that's when we have a lot of North African culture, and it. I think it's great. I do. Look, through video games, you can cross so many borders. You can have probably kids from five countries, ten countries, like playing something together. Uh, I'm, I really wish you tons of luck on, on this and tons of whatever it takes because... Uh, bringing g giving kids an education and taking them on an emotional journey and showing them a possible future um i think is is i think education like a good education is, is really where it's at because the politicians have no clue no oh, yeah no, politicians no way is dividing leave. people yeah the but, schools are just doing a horrible job and it and it's, it's gonna, actually i was gonna say it's actually sorry to cut you off it's actually interesting to bring that up because I plan to translate it into Arabic and also have a friend that plans to help me translate it into Farsi. So nice. pretty much I plan to launch it in Arab countries I do who don't know much about the Holocaust, also have high anti-Semitism. 
And for Farsi, we plan to basically kind of shit in Iran, but you know, on servers, you can find because a lot of people game in Iran, they do, but they go on VPNs, all those things. So that's kind of what I saw with the game. It's not just for Europe and America, isn't it? It's kind of for the rest of the world. Because let's say, imagine a kid in Africa plays this, right? Or a Nigerian kid, you know, they might have to be like, oh, shit, maybe I want to learn more <laughs> after it. So before we close, if you could speak, if you have one minute to speak to all the Jews in the world, they all listen to you right oh, now. God, Turn on, I don't know what to say. Flip a switch. They're all listening. The Orthodox, the 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 woke leftist, the the conservative right, the the the, the religious the Zionists, the ones living in Israel, the ones who served in the yeah. military, the ones who hate Israel, love it. All of them. They're all <laughs> yeah. listening. They're all listening. They, they <laughs> we gave them we gave each a fifty bucks to listen for one minute. <laughs> what are you saying? What would I say? Oh, so much pressure suddenly because I'm not in time to prepare. I would say is one thing. I really think we need to protect and pay attention more to what happens to Orthodox Jews, very much uh, in in the West, because they are kind of ones that really suffer the most in terms of hate crimes, like getting attacked in Brooklyn nonstop. And just because, say, Orthodox Jews, you know, let's be honest, most people view them as the other because you know they have unique outfits, right? But I even used to have that kind of bit of a prejudice, pretty much, where I was like, oh, maybe they're a bit too much kind of thing. But then I started making friends with Orthodox, I did. And basically, I realized I was in the wrong. So I would say what's really important is really to make sure Orthodox Jews and visible Jews are okay, and for us not to kind of abandon them so much. Because also another thing, when anti-Semites come first for Orthodox, they're going to come for you next. So that's what I tell all the other Jews. So even if you may not like them, disagree with them, this and that, you have to protect them. You do. And this comes from someone who is not religious at all and super secular. Well, atheist, as you said. Yeah. Agnostic <laughs> at, at times. It, it kind of depends. I'm, yeah, it does. That's atheist, okay. agnostic. It's, it's like my friend, my friend, uh, he says, uh, I am Jewish, but I'm, I'm, I'm atheist. And okay, I, I want to marry an atheist, but she's got to be Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, what Jewish. Kid, that's what's kind of cool with Judaism, because I know a rabbi and he knows I'm atheist and he's like, come to the synagogue. And I'm like, I'm atheist. Doesn't matter. Yeah, God so, doesn't care, you know. You can, you can <laughs> yeah, so I like that a lot, actually. I do that. That's one cool thing where which I think is about um kind of the religion and all those things that you know you're Jew, you're just a Jew, pretty much. It doesn't matter if you go off into new ideas, don't believe anymore. And I think that's really inclusive and kind of cool. And I think that's why I probably managed to keep the culture together more, too. So that's a very positive thing. Nice. All right, guys. Luke, great to meet you. I hope to see you out in LA in a few weeks. Yeah, hit me up uh, via Hello. email. That's always Hello. kind of the easiest uh, way to reach me. Nice. Much. But no, I have a uh, sort of visiting Israel. I just keep on pushing it back. Don't push it too much before they close it and you know, and they ship everyone to Uganda. Um, <laughs> listen, uh, when is the game coming out? Next give us a, year, give us, a, give us a plug, name, so, dates. So, kind of, um, next year, like I've been, I keep on changing through the dates. Well, first, I was thinking for, for International Holocaust Memorial right. Day, which is in January, but then I right. think I'm probably going to launch it for the Israeli uh, Remembrance Day, right? But if not, I was planning to launch it during the Veldi Roundup dates. I'm just pretty much it's. The game is more when to launch it because it needs to be launched at the right time where there's not two other big games coming out. So let's say kind of mid next year, even if even if it's quite finished now. Tell us what it's called. It's good, it's good. called. Yeah, tell us what it's called. Uh, it's called the, the Light in the Darkness. It's going to launch first on Xbox and Windows, and then it's going to come towards the other platforms kind of after but um the reason why i'm watching it first on xbox is because xbox actually they actually understood uh you know 
anti-Semitism, they did more than the other platforms. So other platforms at first were more like, hey, not really wanting to focus too much on Jews as a minority right now. Well, Xbox kind of understood it right away. So that's why they were the right partners to kind of go with first. And then Microsoft. So it's okay big platform. Right, right, right. So nice. good. So light in the darkness. Uh, remember where it all started when the thing takes over the world? You know, it started here in the, on the Jew function. Uh, we're very happy to have Luke Bernard, game designer, uh, French born with an English accent, living in LA. Yes. <laughs> and uh, we, we, we had a great time talking to Luke. Yeah, of course, follow us on Twitter, on Instagram, on YouTube, uh, wherever Jews hang out, basically. And if you know someone who wants to talk about uh, this, the, this issue, a Jewish question, the age-old problem uh, and how we solve it today. We'd love to talk to you. And uh, until the next time, we're the Jew Function. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Have a great day. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye.